Our God is faithful. And welcome to this Sunday ministration of the Word of God. God has been faithful. He's brought us thus far into December of 2020. Nobody ever knew we would reach this far, but God has proved himself able. We want to invite you to join us here in the Chapel of Grace, University of Medugri, Nigeria. Please gather your folks. Let's share in the word of God. And God will build you up. We are discussing the topic. Watch, therefore, your Lord is coming. Watch, therefore, your Lord is coming. We took it from the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for bringing us to another beginning of another week, another experience of new creation, another celebration of victory over death and over hell and over sin. And we pray, O oh God, that as we meditate upon your word, your word will come alive unto us and transform us and equip us, even by the wisdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may watch for our Lord is coming through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Watch, therefore, watch, therefore, your Lord is coming. This is what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 42. He said, watch therefore, for you know not, you know not what hour your Lord does come. You know not what hour. You know the Lord will come, but you know not the hour he will come. And so you have to watch every hour as if the Lord is coming every hour. This is the most important wisdom that Jesus gave the church. It is the most superwise admonition and counsel that Jesus gave to the church. Why did Jesus insist on emphasizing the need to watch. Why? The reason is simple, because the Christian race, the heavenly race, from grace to glory, is not an easy race. The heavenly race from grace to glory is not an easy road. It's a tough journey. You need violent pressure and you need diligent watching. It's, it's, it's fraught with work, with stewardship, with mission, with warfare, with fight, with race, with contention, with persistence, with patience. With endurance. You need everything it takes. That's why God packaged all these things and gave it to us as free grace. So you will not have excuse and say, well, the road was too tough for me, Lord. No. He's given you enough toughness in grace so that you will not come with excuse of the old nature. And because this race is this track, the track of this race is, is full of snares. You need to watch how you sprint and how you run. You need to watch and be sure that you are on the track, you are not off the track. You need to watch and make sure that you keep glory in focus. You keep Jesus in focus. And you keep in touch with grace and you don't disdain grace 
or abuse grace or ignore grace, reject grace and decide to go off the race. The race that you have been given free qualification to be a participant of the Olympiad and you just get up and walk out of the stadium without running. Or you go and lie down somewhere, you know, among the spectators or somewhere in the dressing room. You just lie down there and you will not get the prize. You will not even participate. They will not see you at the end, the line of the race. And uh, if, you, if you don't watch, and Jesus will also add pray, watch and pray, take heed, watch, pray, take heed, watch, pray. This is what Jesus keeps saying. You know, it's unfortunate, of course, that the church of today, you know, we've, we've developed a modern culture that authenticity is in carefreeness. You know, you are yourself when you do things without caring, just the way they come to you. That's when you are yourself. I don't know how the world ended up with that kind of stupidity, that kind of foolishness. I don't know how the world just ended up with that kind of philosophy, which is not philosophy, it's philosophy. But I pray that you will not accept that cultural ideology, that authenticity is when you do things spontaneously on your own. No, Jesus says no. Authenticity is when you do things with watchfulness, carefulness, diligence, patience, perseverance. That's when you are authentic. That's when you are authentic. Yes, that's when you are authentic. The world has made the opposite to be authentic. And many people are not watching. This is a big snare has caught up with many and many have erred. Many have made shipwreck of their faith. Many have fallen by the wayside. Many have backslidden. Many have apostatized and have abandoned, abandoned the faith. They've apostatized from the faith. Now, the, the strange modern church of today snobs and sneers and scoffs had any wise sense of watchfulness. When you are talking about watchfulness, they say, ah, no, no. The way you are talking about watchfulness, you are, you are trying to show fearfulness. You are trying to show faithlessness. You are trying to show legalism. You are trying to show non-authenticity they you know they, they and they would discourage you and say okay yes yes so they are correct and then you say that the lord is a liar that the lord is wrong you deny the lord deride his truths and then you accept the lie of this perishing and you know world of our time that has been taken over by Satan and the Antichrist. Now, this thing they call ideology is, is not wisdom by God's reckoning. It is foolishness as far as God is concerned. People who don't watch are fools. People who just do things with carefreeness are not wise. You know, God said, through the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 15 to 17, he said, You need to know what the will of God is and don't be unwise, don't be foolish, but be wise and know what the will of God is. Walk with every circumspection and redeem the, the time because the days are evil. Don't be unwise and don't forget what the will of God is. But today we preach that we should, this, this 
Unwise is wise. And this fault folly is wisdom. And I pray that you will watch against this trap. This is snare of our time. And so don't join the people that say, well, the way to express, you know, your, your faith and your courage is to be carefree, to be tactless, to be watchless, you know, to, to follow the foolishness of the world. No, that is not how to express your faith. You express faith by watching. Because if you didn't have, if you had faith, then you should watch. If you didn't have faith, then there's no need to watch. There's no need to watch. Watch for what? There's nothing to watch about or watch against. Because you believe nothing. But if you believe something, that the Lord is coming at an hour you do not know, then you will watch. You will watch. And I pray that we will not allow the unscriptural Christianity, the canal cultural Christianity, the reveling and carousing Christianity that has made many to stray away to make us to shipwreck our faith. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. By this pagan argument, this libertine gentile logic, we have argued that watchfulness is not really faith. We have argued that watchfulness is not grace. And because of it, we have departed from the truth of our Lord Jesus. In fact, in Matthew, in Mark chapter 13, Mark chapter 13, from verse 33 to 37, Jesus kept repeating, watch, 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 watch. Let's see. In verse 33, he said, take heed, take heed, and watch. That's double watching. Take heed means be observant. Watch, so be observant. <laughs> he said, take heed, and watch, and pray. Take heed, watch, and pray. For you know not when the time is. Because the time will surely come. But you don't know the time. Because you don't know the time, that's why you have to watch. That you be not taken unawares. You don't rest on your oars. You don't settle on your knees. Verse 34 says, For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the doorkeeper to watch. Verse 35 says, remember every verse has watch in it. Verse 33 has watch in it. Verse 34 has watch in it. And then verse 35 begins with watch again. Say, watch you therefore. For you know not when the master of the house comes, at evening or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Just notice that there is watch in verse 33, verse 34, verse 35, and verse 37. This is the most important, the wisest admonition and counsel that Christ has given. Watch! And any Christian that doesn't understand this, if you don't watch, you will fall. If you don't take heed, you will fall. And if you don't take heed and fall, you will not even know that you are fallen. Because you are not watching. So many besetting snares have befallen the watchless church over the years, especially in recent times. This thing has been going on for the past 2,000 years, but it has become accelerated in the past 50 years. When you 
you, you look into the history of God's people, you see that God used retribution, he used remonstration, he used revivals, he used reformation to help his people to recover from watchlessness, the snare of watchlessness. But the problem is that in today's church, Satan and the Antichrist have crept in and they have now told us that rebellion and revelry is revival. You know, we say the spirit is moving when we are behaving in a rebellious and revelous way. That's when we say the spirit is moving. So, I, even if we watch, we'll be watching in the negative direction. Today, the church feels that retribution and remonstration are demonic attacks, not divine interventions. All they will say is you are trying is an invitation to legalism. And they don't even know what legal they just hate the word and anything they don't like, they call it legalistic. When you tell them to watch, they say it's legalism. Tell them to live holy, they say it's legalism. Take heed, legalism. Everything, legalism. You know, this generation has a way of tagging a bad name to a good thing so that they will reject it. And the biggest snare of the church today is neglecting to be watchful against this culture of imbibing half-truths of imbibing the lies of this world and bringing them as if they are Christian principles or precepts. And these things teach and abuse grace. They tell you, well, with grace you don't need to watch. Grace means you don't need to watch. And you're asking them, which Bible says so? Where did they get that from? Grace does not imply permission to sin. No. Grace means and is a free gift of power. Supernatural power to overcome sin. Supernatural power against sin. A power you don't deserve, a power you don't earn, but a power that is there waiting for you to just believe and it's released unto you freely. I pray that God will wake us up, wake us up to watch. For we know that our Lord is coming, and we don't know when. Wake up, watch, and pray, because Satan is busy among the saints. If you are not aware, Satan is busy among the saints. I want to remind you that he was busy in Eden. When he was in Eden, he told Adam and Eve, you don't need to watch. You don't need to watch against this tree. And they accepted that gentile logic, that argument, and that killed Adam and Eve. And when Jesus came again in the wilderness, he came to Jesus and said, well, I mean, you're a son of God. You don't need to worry. You can just throw yourself down. I mean, you don't need to be hungry. You can't turn anything into food and eat. And if Jesus had not reversed what Adam messed up, we would have been forever condemned. But thank God, Jesus stood on the word of God. He was watching. Even though he was fasting and weak and hungry and thirsty, he was watchful in the scorching sun and in the dryness of, of the, the Judean wilderness, rocky wilderness with thorns and briars everywhere, all kinds of serpents, Jesus withstood. And that is why he tells us, I withstood, you must withstand. If you don't withstand, you will not stand. And so he said we should watch against everything that is a snare. Let's watch against falsehood of half-truth because half-truth kills. 
Let's watch against the agents of modern paganism. Have they invaded the church with their half truths to revise ancient apostolic truths? They are revising everything. You say they are progressing. I can't be progressive when you are already retrogressive morally, retrogressive spiritually. Is it because you are progressive, you know, technologically, and you think that that means progressiveness? How many people can build, how much of technology of today can build the pyramid in Giza? You know, we are so proud of our technology. Let me tell you, you've not even seen anything. And because of it, we think that, well, the old people didn't have all the things. We should revise it. Who told you? The Bible says you are a worse generation, a crooked and perverse generation. And you say that you are a better and better generation. So people are teaching that the gift of salvation, uh, you know, is, is not necessary. Once you have the gift of salvation, you are okay. You don't need to pro pursue the goal of salvation. They say gift of salvation is enough. You don't need goal of salvation. That's legalism. They tell you, well, that, you know, you don't have to, you know, run the race for the prize. You already have the grace of the prize. Jesus has paid the price and given you the grace. You don't need to run the race to win your prize. You know, they just twist everything and you get confused. They tell you that grace, prize, is the same thing as the, the glory prize. That the price of grace which Jesus paid and gave you is the same thing as the price of glory which Jesus is keeping for those who use the lies, his price well. If you don't use the price well, you don't get the price. If you don't use grace well, you don't get glory. That's the way it is. That's why you have to watch. If, if it doesn't matter, then we don't need to watch. And people think it doesn't matter. But Jesus says it matters. They say today that because we are sons of God, even if we tempt God and throw ourselves down on the pinnacle of the temple. That nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. And we think because we are sons, we can tempt God. They say, they say since you are alive, even if you eat the fruit, you cannot die. The argument that the devil used to deceive Adam and Eve, these lying agents of Satan, they have come to deceive us, thinking that libertinism is sin. Uh, the, the, that libertinism in sin is the same thing as liberty from sin. No, liberty from sin means that you no longer live in libertinism in sin. That's what it means. They, don't, they are not the same thing. They are opposite of each other. They tell you that remission of sin is permission to sin. No, remission of sin is not permission to sin. They want us to harden our hearts, to be impenitent, to be disobedient, to be negligent of the truth. They want us to squander the grace of God and disdain the blood of Jesus. They may succeed with some, as with Adam and Eve, but I pray they will not succeed with you and I, as they failed, as Satan failed with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus was watchful. And say we must be watchful. Luke chapter 21, 20, 34 says, And take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be weighed down with carousing and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. If you're able to withstand the snares, you'll be able to stand before the Son of Man. May God open our eyes to watch. Let us pray. Father, we thank you because your word is everlasting and superlative wisdom. There is no wisdom like in your word. 
and your wisdom in your word is forever true and forever sure. We pray, o God, as we lay hold to watch, because our Lord is coming. We must not join the carousing and the reveling world. The Lord, we shall walk in wisdom, taking heed and walking and watching and praying. May that be the portion of your people, O God, every one part of this broadcast. Lord, let your watching spirit be tight and firm in his or her heart in the name of Jesus Christ. And unto God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit all of you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all yours, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Yes.